Project 1065, Chapter 83, 8,422 feet. The cable car bumped and juddered as it went over one of the pylons that supported it during its 4,000-foot climb. I closed my eyes and gripped the metal bench so hard it left deep lines on my skin. I felt lightheaded and not just because of the thin air of the Swiss Alps. Standing on, at the base of the aerial tramway in Mirren, I had watched the tiny little cable cars as they moved up and down the mountain, hanging from spiderweb thin cables that snaked up into the snow-capped peaks above us. Now I was inside one of those little trams, dangling a hundred feet over a sea of green fir trees and white snow. Not that I was looking out the window. I think I can see my house from here, Otmar said. He and Earhart both ran back and forth across the cabin, weaving between the other passengers for the best views. I wish they would just sit still. Every time they moved from one side to the other, I could feel the cabin sway left to right, right to left. Is your friend going to be all right? A woman asked Fritz, who sat beside me. He looks a little green. Something he ate, Fritz said. All this time, and he was still covering for me. I still helped, still helping me hide the fact that I was deathly afraid of heights. I was better with heights now than I had ever been. Able to actually step onto a cable car I knew was about to climb up the second half of an 8,422-foot tall mountain, for example, but only because of the work I'd done with Simon. Simon. Whenever I closed my eyes, all I could see was him looking up at me, punching an SS officer, running, twisting as the bolts hit him, falling. I saw it play out in my head over and over again like a piece of broken film. Why did you have to do it, Simon? Surely there could have been another way. I wrenched my eyes open. The brilliant blue of the alpine sky glared back at me through the windows. So many windows. I quickly stared at the floor. I had to ignore what I knew lay just outside the walls and floor of the cabin. Space. Empty air. Nothing. An Irishman, a Scotsman, and, Eng and an Englishman apply for a chauffeur's job, I thought, trying to distract myself from remembering Simon. I'm such a good driver, I can go within six inches of a cliff and not drive off, says the Scotman. I'm such a good driver, I can go within one inch of a cliff and not drive off, says the Englishman. Oh yeah, says the Irishman. Well, I'm such a good driver, I stay as far away from cliffs as I can. The long arm atop the cable car rumbled across another pylon, and I put a hand to my mouth for fear I'd puke all over the lady standing in front of us. That which doesn't destroy us makes us stronger, Fritz said, quoting an old German philosopher the Nazis loved. The last thing I needed right now was Nazi platitudes, but I nodded. I had to keep playing the part of a ze zealous Hitler youth, for a little while longer anyway. There it is, someone said at last, the resort. 